I will be comparing production, marketing and consumption of Star Wars The Force Awakens from 2015 and Pride from 2014. Star Wars The Force Awakens is the long-awaited sequel to the epic sci-fi saga, Star Wars, touching on fantasy political drama and a fight for democracy, while Pride is a historical comedy drama about a small LGBT group that protests for acceptance as they lend their support to the Thatcher-era miners' strike. Let's begin by discussing the production of Pride before we jump into Star Wars. Pride was produced by multiple production companies such as BBC Films, British Film Institute, Pathé, Cine Plus, Cathé Plus and Ingenious Media. Except from the BBC, all these companies are relatively unknown in the UK due to its low budget, historical theme and limited demographic appeal, it was assumed that the film would be modest box office returns, so it required the help of multiple companies to produce and distribute the film in other markets. Moving on, I'm going to discuss Pride in terms of genre and genre theory. So, there's an obvious genre of this movie, historical fiction. However, elements of other genres incorporated into this movie consisting of comedy, drama, LGBT and romance that work together to produce escapist entertainment. By having a blend of different genres, the film will appeal to more people. Despite the mashup of genres, the film still follows Chana's idea that each genre has its own conventions and tropes. And this film conforms to its historic fiction genre by featuring real-life locations with characters based off of real people. This approach reinforces the film's strong sense of realism and helps to keep the budget low, as it will find little need of CGI. The film depends on diegetic sounds to make the film seem more realistic. Lastly, the casting avoids famous movie stars or Hollywood big names, with no one bigger than the likes of Bill Nye and Imelda Staunton. The lack of a well-known cast makes the characters more relatable to the audience as they would perceive the characters more as everyday people rather than Hollywood stars. Now, let's compare the production of Pride to Star Wars The Force Awakens. Star Wars The Force Awakens was directed by J.J. Abrams, produced by Kathleen Kennedy and written by Lawrence Kasdan. Huge names who you all recognise that contribute massively to the film industry. Also, not to mention the film took three years to make. This trio has been associated with so many big Hollywood blockbusters. Abrams has previously directed tentpole movies such as Mission Impossible 3 and Star Trek, which highlight his ability to entertain pre-existing fan bases. Kazdan was the co-writer of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, meaning that he clearly knows the franchise inside out. Kennedy has also worked on famously beloved films such as E.T. and Indiana Jones. Now, let's discuss Stephen Neal's idea of repetition difference and how it applies to Star Wars The Force Awakens. So, from the trailer we can see that the film conforms to its genre via its fantasy sci-fi conventions featuring spaceships, aliens and the Force as well as comic book violence. Also, Star Wars The Force Awakens uses binary opposites and character roles to clearly illustrate its heroes and villains. Rey, the hero. It's a poor female scavenger who's caring yet still forceful and dynamic. Kylo Ren, the villain, is a powerful male who is leader of the diabolical First Order, who displays a ruthless efficiency and disregard in which he dispatches life. He's basically the sequel's new Darth Vader. Lastly, I swiftly want to discuss representation and inclusion. Examples include Finn, the helper, a young black male who plays a vital role as the deuteragonist. Phasma, a high-ranking female commander who leads the First Order's Legion of Stormtroopers and acts as a secondary antagonist in the story. So, these characters are aimed to appeal to as many types of audience as possible, which broadens the film's popularity due to its representation and incorporation of minorities. Finally, I quickly want to mention that the movie isn't overloaded with CGI, unlike the abysmal prequels. Star Wars The Force from Awakens uses more practical effects and uses real filming locations rather than CGI. For example, Yaku is filmed in a natural desert, thus the film evokes a more naturalistic feel, unlike the prequels, whilst it still manages to conform to its sci-fi genre. Let's discuss how Pride was marketed. The trailer opens with original videos of minor striking that appear right from the get-go. This provides context by relating the real-life events in which the film attempts to retell this well-known story from the perspective of a small LGBT group. The trailer also is clear to establish what our group of protagonists are fighting for, acceptance and equality. It also establishes that the movie is a historical comedy as it shows funny moments. 
The film is also marketed to appeal to minorities such as LGBT citizens and people who have experienced the events the movie retells, including the miners themselves. Thus, the movie will likely appeal to them too. The movie is an accurate representation of the fight for equality of minors and homosexuals during Margaret Thatcher's years of Prime Minister, which some consider a reign of tyranny. However, the story is showcased through the perspective of LGBT people and historical events, which could have been exaggerated for entertainment purposes. Despite its small liberties with the historical facts, it still manages to accurately explore the themes of social realism, escapism, and political controversy. As a small cinema city type film, it depended on awards to produce word of mouth and advertising. Since it won awards at the famous Cannes Film Festival and the BAFTAs, this was an effective pr approach. The trailers were promoted on Instagram and YouTube. This marketing was effective because it's expensive to advertise on TV. Lastly, the film was promoted in newspapers as chances are the people reading the newspapers are likely the ones who would show interest in the movie because of their older generation. The trailer illustrates the sci-fi genre, as well as a blend of new and old characters, one of which being Han Solo and the other being new villain Kylo Ren. Furthermore, in the Q&A, an example is shown of an alien character being controlled as a puppet, contrasting to the CGI-heavy prequels, showing that the filmmakers clearly reflect on the problems with the prequels. Furthermore, we got to, do, we got to consider the impact Disney had on the franchise since they bought from Luca, Lucasfilm in 2012 for four billion US dollars. Disney brings more fans and marketing to the franchise. The brand Disney appeals to many parents, as Disney's demographic is predominantly children. Lastly, I want to discuss the contrast of how Star Wars The Force Awakens and Pride were marketed. Unlike Pride, Star Wars The Force Awakens was marketed everywhere, from posters to toys to clothes and even cereal boxes, as well as social media and TV of course. Not to forget that their budget was 306 million US dollars, and they spent another 175 million US dollars to market the movie. Star Wars The Force Awakens was released in over 4,000 US cinemas in December 2015 before Christmas, with most audiences travelling very far to see the movie. Overall, audiences reacted very positively to the film. Even franchise newcomers enjoyed the film due to a linear narrative that makes the film easy to follow. The film received an audience score of 86% on Rotten Tomatoes and 7.9 on IMDb. Overall, fans generally found the film more enjoyable than the prequels and were intrigued by these new characters. Besides Leia, the franchise lacked strong female role models. Thus, it was appealing for women to see such strong female protagonists such as Rey and a ruthless villain such as Phasma. Lastly, the film continues to feed into the intertextual relationship it has with fans. Just like the other Star Wars movies, it fits into the vast matrix of Star Wars fandom. Bloma and Katz reckon that people watch Star Wars The Force Awakens for entertainment and immersion, so the preferred way to watch this movie is in a cinema, with surround sound and a big screen. In Pride, people are already familiar with the minor strikes, but the participation of LGBT groups may be unknown. So, the expectations of the movie may be different or minimal. The film's box office was a reported 16.7 million US dollars, which is surprisingly good for a film that appeals mostly to LGBT communities and left-wing citizens. Lastly, this historic fiction movie aims to raise awareness of the struggles and discrimination gay people face as a preferred reading of the film.